the new facility at Coburn Central West will give us um, certainly the best facility in the AFL um, across Australia, but it will move us to world class and an era of free agency and being more competitive for staff on field and off field. Um, what they will see when they arrive there is that we have the best facilities in the AFL. Now it's a moving feast. Um, many years ago this was one of the best facilities in the AFL as well and now it's one of the smallest. So we've taken a view to plan ahead for 50 years and keep, keep that really, really competitive. Um, it also gives us a really solid financial structure to move on from and I always talk about the importance of being financially strong but the partnership um, with the, Coburn City, the City of Coburn and um, Landcorp in getting the land and certainly the state and federal governments from their contributions to the community side of the facility is really important as well um, in, in delivering that, that fantastic outcome. One of the things that's very, very important about the facility is it's a community-based facility and we're currently forecasting in excess of a million uh, members of the public will walk in to use the, the shared facilities, the aquatic, uh, the basketball courts, the ovals. Um, so you're going to have a club that, in my view, has always been highly, success, uh, highly accessible for individuals of the community to be part of and experience, and down that at Coburn Central West, it, that will increase as well. So I think it will set us up for stronger engagement and interaction with our supporters also. As the club has grown, we've wondered whether it had a ceiling, you know, at 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 members. Do you think it has? And if you do, where do you think that ceiling lies? Well, I think the, the population of Western Australia continues to grow really, really strongly. Um, and you only need to look at the other clubs, um, you know, some of the larger clubs on the East Coast. If you have the right stadium deal and you're playing an exciting brand of football and you engage with the public in the right way, uh, what's the ceiling? I think go and ask Collingwood, Hawthorne, Essendon, um, what that ceiling is. Certainly, um, we're planning to, to run our business around a 60,000 seat stadium. Um, and we, you know, we, we see significant growth. Was the choice, Steve, of Fremantle, if you were running the club and the club started, would you have made it Fremantle? Or would you have made it a more generic West Australian term, similar to West Coast, you know, embracing the whole of the joint? You, is there any, been any downside to that, you think? Uh, no, no, I think it's fantastic. And the, the concept of getting in a time machine and going back, um, I'm not a great believer in that. Um, but I look at what it's given us, a really strong franchise um, with the public. And if you look around, if you go out to Mindari or Joondalup or Bunbury or Esperance, We've got as many members um, in outlying areas as we have anywhere else um, and I think we capture a lot of the spirit of Fremantle and the, the spirit of football that sits around Fremantle we captured at the outset but now we're certainly a club where we've got as many supporters in Karratha, um, you know, as, as any other club. Uh, we're doing well and I think we're supported around the state for what we stand for, not for a geography. So when the great leap forward happened, when you guys came in, did you come in with a plan? Did you look at the club and go, you know what, we need to do that, we need to fix the colours, we need to do the jumper, we need to streamline this, we need to do this? Did you actually have a plan and you knew what to do and then you just implemented it? There was certainly a plan formulated in 2009 um, and it wasn't just Steve Rossich and myself, um, the entire board and senior executive of the club uh, were involved in that. And I think well documented, we were parodied at the time, sustained success was the name of that plan and it was about fixing ourselves off field and fixing ourselves on field for a sustained period of success because we know how hard the competition is and we know you've got to have all those elements flowing well to do that. So certainly um, there, there has been a significant plan and I think we're in a bit of a review process at the moment as we are um, and we're, we're happy with how it's tracking along. We're hitting our key key indicators. One of, the, one of the reasons you did that is because you wanted a bigger club as well as a better club. Um, where do you sit now? Are you in the top half? Do you think? Are you in the top third? It it would depend. It would depend on which metric you looked at. Um, certainly, um, you know, on on key financial metrics, where four, five, six um, on a lot of the key metrics. Every club's stadiums deal. Every club's financial deal is different. Uh, we're in a different state to a lot of the clubs. We're fortunate to have the prosperity of Western Australia um, driving us along as well. But interestingly, and this is a fact that we keep reinforcing to the AFL, um, being 4, 5, 6 is not the same as being 1, 2 or 3. There is still a massive financial gap between the really strong, powerful uh, financial clubs, particularly some of those with gambling revenue and the Fremantle Dockers who have no gambling revenue and who don't have the history and the financial strength of other clubs. So one of our key communication tasks is to make sure they don't lump us in the bag, you know, Fremantle are a successful, powerful club. Um, well, we're not. We're not sitting in that top four club. We've, we've got a long way to go, and there is a significant difference 
as they look at equalisation and taxing clubs between where we are at and uh, where some of the other clubs are at. How important is the commercial partnership deal with the new stadium? Um, absolutely critical. I think you can go and ask the two clubs in Adelaide or the clubs who have deals with Eddie had how important it is. If you do not strike the right deal for your club, um, it can put your club in a weak financial position and that will then put your club in a weak position on field and then that will mean you are not playing the sort of football you need to play to fill a stadium. So the right deal for on the stadium is critical for Fremantle, it's critical for football and it's also critical for the stadium operator. So what leverage do you have though? Can you actually say, look, we're not going there until this deal's done the way we want it? Uh, I, I think the, the government wants us to play at the stadium, we want to play at the stadium, um, it is going to be world class and I think everyone's in a room talking about how to do a deal where everyone gets their objectives met. So, so how did Adelaide mess it up then? Uh, I don't know, you'd have to go and ask Adelaide about that one, um, I, don't, I don't know. But we, we, don't intend, we don't intend to be in that situation and I don't think the government wants us to be in that situation. We've seen an amazing spike in crowds. Adelaide as a result of the shift to Adelaide. I would expect that. If you look at um, what we're doing now, we're, we're largely sold out. I think even Greater Western Sydney, I think we've sold every seat but one um, in the stadium. So I think Steve Rossich bought that so we could say it was a complete sellout <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, I, I would expect that if we're playing an exciting brand of football. Having been to Adelaide, it is a spectacular football experience. Um, Anyone who's got an old cathode ray TV tube and is now sitting in front of a 68 centimetre plasma or LCD, that's what you're going to get at the new stadium. Um, from the moment you sort of embark on the journey to the minute you leave, it will change the way you watch football. And what they've done, particularly with the acoustics at Adelaide, um, the sound coming out of there is quite incredible. So I think people, whatever they define going to the football as being now, it will be a massive leap into the new stadium and it will make people want to turn up to the football. There's a number that's being held over as with um, Patterson's at the moment which are reserved for casual walk-ups. Uh, I'm not sure that, that number's been totally finalised yet but we wouldn't put a ceiling on the number of memberships and we've got a ceiling on the number of seats we can sell now and we're approaching I think you know we're in the high 48s, 49,000 um, memberships in a scenario where we can only sell, where we've got a capacity of 42,000. So there would be no limit to the number of memberships we could have.